Thank you, Anthony. And uh, I would like to thank Marie and uh, Dan for their efforts. My presentation will be about the connection between Spinoza's TTP and the medieval tradition, and particularly Al-Farabi's political philosophy. I will argue that uh, Al-Farabi exerted the most significant influence on the TTP regarding the role imagination can play in both prophecy and politics. As some scholars show, the imagination in Spinoza has two faces. In ethics, he discussed how the imagination can be overcome and replaced by the true understanding of things. And in the TTP, the question is how the imagination can be stabilized and empowering. So my talk will be devoted to this aspect in the TTP and the influence of Al-Farabi on uh, Spinoza. What I'm going to discuss, just, just to be clear, is not about Spinoza and Islam. Uh, Spinoza, as some scholars have shown, a new Islamic civilization and religious doctrines, and we can also guess his attitude toward Islam, Quran, and Muhammad. My concern is uh, the study of the influence of Al-Farabi, whose teachings were not uh, Islamic. Islamic in uh, strict to sense so, uh, but philosophical, as I will discuss. Before discussing Al-Farabi's uh, influence on Spinoza, a critical review is necessary since my, uh, my argument is against uh, the background of two sets of uh, body of literature. First, some scholars have discussed the influence of Al-Farabi on Maimonides, which is an important intermediary figure here in the medieval Jewish philosophy. And putting both of them, Al-Farabi and Spinoza and Maimonides, in one basket. However, they cut the line between them and Spinoza's radical enlightenment. For example, ac according to Leo Strauss, Al-Farabi, Avicenna, Averroes, and Maimonides both of them be belong to the ancient uh, Platonic philosophy whose hallmark was the distinction between esoteric and exoteric teachings. What, have, what has been called uh, in Strauss's works and his followers uh, the theological po political predicament, uh, which obviously drawn from the title of the TTP. And uh, this uh, problem or, the, uh, or uh, the conflict between Athens and Jerusalem in Strauss's vocabulary tackles with this problem and is at the core of the history of uh, ancient philosophy and even modern philosophy and could not be solved in favor of either philosophy or theology, according to Leo Strauss and his followers. But according to Strauss, Spinoza's project uh, is in opposition to the classical philosophical tradition uh, because the radical enlightenment of Spinoza disturbs the balance of reason and faith and uh, attempted, to, attempted to solve the problem in favor of rational enlightenment, which requires blurring the distinction between the vulgar and the intellectuals and insisting on the free rational thinking and philosophizing for every human being, which is not uh, uh, possible uh, uh, and neither desirable, according to Strauss. I think there are a few problems with this account. Uh, firstly, Strauss overlooks the differences between, between Islamic and Jewish intellectual history with regard to the connection between philosophy and theology, because uh, in Islamic tradition, uh, at least in, uh, in the 10th century, there is a clear cut distinct distinction between philosophy and theology. Al-Farabi Al was philosopher, and for example, uh, the other, we have a lot of theologians defending the doctrines of uh, Quran and uh, Islamic teachings. Uh, but in Jewish, in the Jewish tradition, like the Christian uh, 
medieval tradition, uh, theology and philosophy are intertwined in the, and we cannot se uh, separate them uh, into two different uh, fields of study or discipline. So it is very important to note because I would like to draw the similarity between uh, uh, Al-Farabi and uh, Spinoza later. And uh, I think what Strauss called the theological political problem as something shared between Plato and Al-Farabi also overlooks the original aspects of Al-Farabi's theory of imagination. Because prophecy, it was not the problem of Greek philosophers. Poetics, rhetorics, fantasia, all of them were, but not prophecy, which is uh, to something different and requires a different account, according to Al-Farabi and some other Muslim philosophers. Second literature is scholars who put emphasis on the positive influence of Jewish philosophy or Jewish theology, and especially on the influence of Maimonides to, on Spinoza. For example, Leon Roth, Sholomo Pines, Arthur Hyman, among others. A typical example of this thesis is developed in a, an article by Warren Zev Harvey in, uh, entitled A Portrait of Spinoza as a Maimonidian, who extensively discussed uh, the influence and as the title shows, he portrays Spinoza as a completely Maimonides, Maimonidian. So the problem with these works, these works, is that they ignored the, that Spinoza radically criticized and rejected Maimonides' main teachings and methods. Some of similarities Harvey and the other scholars of this group discussed are, not, are only apparent and uh, or based on the usage of similar words. For example, uh, gods, uh, all of us know that gods, uh, Spinoza's god is completely different with Maimonides' god. And uh, Spinoza's affection is completely different with uh, Maimonides' uh, term, temperature, temperament, which is the mixture of humors in uh, ancient physics. Or uh, or their difference in bodily imagination in Spinoza and sensual imagination in Maimonides, which are completely different. So, uh, and thirdly, more importantly, almost all of the main features they attributed to Maimonides are rooted in the philosophy of Al-Farabi, who lived 250 years before Maimonides, and we know that Maimonides was significantly, was significantly influenced by Al-Farabi. Uh, an important point here is that prophecy was one of the main problems in uh, Islamic political philosophy. Muslim philosophers regarded pro prophecy as a phenomenon, as a foundation of the Islamic civilization, as a social and political reality and their approach uh, could be called in, in an, an anachronistic way a phenomenological approach because they wouldn't defend Islamic doctrines. For example, Al-Farabi or Razes, uh, um, who uh, discovered alcohol and uh, uh, was a, a, an important scientist and philosopher and physician, who believes in God, but uh, rejected, harshly rejected uh, all religions and prophets and prophecy and uh, called them superstition and so on. And Al-Farabi uh, belonged to this tradition of the what, what has been called golden age of Islamic or Persian uh, civilization. So the difference between uh, Al-Farabi and Maimonides was significant. For example, Al-Farabi, uh, according to Al-Farabi, a philosopher, uh, I, I'm sorry, Al-Farabi was a philosopher while Maimonides was a theologian. According to Al-Farabi, 
there is a difference between philosopher and prophet. Uh, but according to Maimonides, the prophet, and uh, particularly Moses, is an individual with the perfection of both imaginative and rational faculty. Spinoza's distinction between true understanding of the text and the truth of things is important here. I think Al-Farabi is on the side of uh, the truth of things, but Maimonides' main concer concern is to uh, properly understand and interpret and, uh, and uh, provide a true understanding of the text, understanding the true meaning of the text, of, of the scripture uh, in this case. So uh, according to Al-Farabi, a prophet possesses, possesses only the powerful imaginative faculty. In Arabic, it is interesting that in Arabic, there is a distinction between Rasul and Nabi. Uh, Rasul is the messenger of God. Uh, and uh, Nabi uh, means uh, someone who has some powers. For example, he can tell what will happen, happen in the future has very difficult dreams, intuitions, uh, perform magics, and so on, Miracle, miracles, and so on. Uh, Al-Farabi, interesting, interestingly, Al-Farabi didn't talk about uh, Rasul in his, it, it is missing in his vocabulary, but he talked about Nabi, which is uh, based on the uh, on his theory of imagination. So, uh, unlike Al-Farabi, Maimonides' enterprise was to justify the authenticity and the authority of Moses. But Al-Farabi uh, just uh, wants to uh, offer a philosophical uh, interpretation of the phenomenon of prophecy. So uh, let, let's take a look at Al-Farabi's account of prophecy. Farabi discussed extensively the features and fu functions of imaginative faculty, more than, more than any uh, medieval philosopher, I think, or prior to them. Some functions of imaginative faculty, according to Al-Farabi, for example, uh, recollecting the sensible data in, my, in the mind in the form of memory working on and organizing the images and data drawn from sense perception. Imitation from sensual images, for example, in literature. And imitation from intellectual forms uh, and transforming in them into representations and images. And uh, finally, to connect, uh, according to Al-Farabi, the imagination connects two parts of the rational faculty, theoretical and practical. So uh, it is uh, somehow connected to the term of uh, phronesis uh, uh, as something between located between theoretical and pr practical, back and forth between them. So political philosophy, according to Al-Farabi, will be impossible without imagination, although the uh, position of the intellectual faculty and the active intellect is uh, higher than imagination. Uh, according to Al-Farabi, the imagination has always an intermediary role, for example, between sense perception and reason, between particulars and generals, between theory and practice, as I said. And in this case, Al-Farabi went beyond Aristotelian, uh, uh, for example, fantasia, rhetoric, poetics, and uh, attempted to provide an extensive philosophical theory of imagination. And it is the, the main difference uh, of Al-Farabi and some other philosophers in Islamic civilization, like, for example, Averroes. Averroes uh, wanted to explain prophecy based on just some linguistic strategies like poetics and uh, 
and the rhetorics because he didn't want to accept that uh, the prophet, like Maimonides, the prophet is not a philosopher. He ha doesn't have the uh, perfect perfection of uh, rational faculty. But Farabi accepts that uh, the prophet is completely, should be separated from the philosopher and uh, uh, and the, the, their uh, perfection in, of faculty is different. So uh, the similarities between Al-Farabi and Spinoza, especially in the TTP, are striking to me. I mentioned just a couple of points. Al-Farabi drew a distinction between intellect and imagination in his political treatises, where he discusses prophecy and politics in the same framework similar to Spinoza. Uh, philosopher is someone with perfect or a high level of intellectual capacity, while prophet is someone with perfect imaginative faculty. Uh, second important point, Al-Farabi and Spinoza explain prophecy and politics not only based on rhetoric, as I said, rhetoric, novelize, poetics, and so on. Uh, as I said that, yeah. There are striking uh, similarities between them in drawing the distinction between the couples such as reason, imagination, the philosopher, the prophet, the intellectual, and the vulgar, and uh, the unicity, unity and multiplicity. Multiplicity, sorry. Uh, because uh, unity is rooted in reason and multiplicity is rooted in uh, uh, the imagination, according to both Al-Farabi and Spinoza. According to Al-Farabi, as well as Spinoza, religion and community are based on the imagination. Uh, and uh, although their epistemology is intellectual or rational, their political theory put emphasis on the role imagination of the imagination since they observed that most people think and act in accordance with imagination and the irrational. So ideal politics requires prophecy, not in a religious sense of the term, but the act of prophecy. Um, number five, Al-Farabi and Spinoza maintain that the truth-falsehood split is based on rational knowledge of things which is a philosophical enterprise, but the judgment of good and evil is based on the imagination. It is the idea later developed by Arendt, Hannah Arendt, in his uh, uh, interpretation of uh, Kant's theory of judgment, Kant's third uh, critic. Uh, and I would like to... Uh, conclude with a, a couple of differences between Al-Farabi and Spinoza. The differences between them, uh, their accounts of imagination, is rooted in their different world, world views and metaphysical schemes. Although both are monists, rationalists, and share a naturalist conception of God, their difference can be epitomized by the vertical horizontal split in drawn from uh, phenomenology. The Farabian God is the one, with the capital O, the one of the theory of emanation. The world is emanated, according to which the world is emanated from the one in a, a hierarchy of beings. Uh, but the Spinozist worldview is horizontal, and his God is the nature itself. It is a, a kind of pantheist conception uh, of God. So uh, consequently, the conception of reason is different. Intellection for Al-Farabi is the reception of forms from the active intellect, but for Spinoza, reasoning is a human activity in which the human beings are more or less equal, or at least they are uh, in, a, uh, in a horizontal axis. So the imagination in Al-Farabi is also vertical, mediating between the higher level of the intelligible and the lower level of the sensible. In the Aristotelian psychology, in his book, The Anima, and Epistemology. But 
Spinoza's imagination is horizontal. For example, his discuss, discussion of bodily imagination or imagine, imagining the external bodies was completely absent in Al-Farabi. Drawing on the French distinction between three concepts in the study of imagination, which are uh, uh, l'imagination, l'imaginaire, et l'imaginal, or the imagination, the imaginary, and the imaginal, uh, the, which the first one is an individual faculty, the second consists of an intersubjective and collective realm, and the third is an ontological world, which is the, the neologism of Henri Corbin, imaginal world or mundus imaginalis. We can say that Spinoza's theory of imagination commutes between the imagination and the imaginary. The concept of the imaginary was already discussed in the works of, in English, for example, the works of Gottens and Lloyd, collective imagining, or in French uh, by Michel Bertrand, his book uh, titled um, Spinoza et l'imaginaire. While Al-Farabi's theory is located between the imagination and the imaginal, meaning the, an ontological realm, uh, 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 an ontological world of images uh, uh, and the independent world of images, which is not uh, based on the sense, sense perception, the sensual, uh, the sensible world. So, to resume, Al-Farabi's, uh, to, to, to summarize, Al-Farabi's imagination is vertical in the sense I've just said, and Spinoza's imagination is horizontal. Thank you very much.